concept to you. Please don't change the channel just because you disagree. As Dave has said before, and I'll say again, truth can bear weight of investigation. Yeah, you know, there is sound biblical evidence that proves the Saviour is fully human. And there are also theological reasons why this was necessary. Right, yeah. So don't reject the idea without studying it out for yourself. We've got articles and videos on our website as well as past radio programs that study it in depth. So please do look into it. Study it out for yourself because if we're right, this is something you need to know. Dave. Thanks, Miles. Yes, learning that the doctrine of a triune Godhead came in the hundreds of years after the death of Christ, that it was adopted from paganism, and that some early Christians were actually martyred for refusing to accept this change in doctrine was very shocking. The Trinity has come to be viewed as the foundation upon which Christianity itself is built. So, when that is shown to be a lie of the devil, the ripple effects are very far-reaching. As people study into the subject, questions naturally arise. Now today, I would like to look at what the Bible has to say about this idea that the Father and the Son are one and the same person. One and the same person? Does anyone even believe in that? As I was taught that they were one in purpose, but not necessarily one and the same person or entity. No, there are people that believe and teach they are one and the same being. It's actually a common teaching amongst Pentecostal churches. They mm. refer to it as oneness theology. And what is it? Well, basically they teach that God is one. They correctly deny the Trinity, but then they go off in another direction where they claim that the God of the Bible manifested himself as the Father at creation and in the Old Testament. He then manifested himself as the Son for the redemption of sinners. And finally, he manifests himself as the Holy Spirit for the regeneration of sinners, but he is still only one being. So basically splitting the Trinitarian hair there. Well, no, not really. No, just no. another way Satan likes to cause confusion. Now, if anyone listening does not believe this way, I would encourage you just to keep listening. Now, get your pen and paper ready. We're going to be looking at a lot of different passages in Scripture. If you ever have a chance to share the truth with someone who believes in oneness theology, you'll want to have these texts handy, because Scripture is clear that they are two distinct individuals. Now, let's start with John chapter 16, verse 13. This is a promise that we can all claim when looking at new ideas. Don't let Satan make you afraid to consider new light. You're not going to be deceived against your will, but we do need to consider new ideas with an open mind. Now, Miles, as soon as you've got it, could you read it for us, please? John chapter 16, verse 13. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. It is my hope and prayer that everyone listening will lay aside all assumptions, cherished traditions, and preconceived ideas. Take scripture just as it reads, and you will know the truth, because the spirit of Yah will teach it to you. Okay, now we're going to be going through so many different passages. I've actually printed okay. several off for you, Miles, here. Ah, so, right. I'll save you a bit of time, I was thinking. There you are. Right, that's great. Thank you so much indeed for this. Okay, let's get started. So, to begin, I'd like to ask those who believe that the Father and the Son are one and the same being this question. If the Father and the Son are literally the same being, how is it that the Son can be tempted, but the Father cannot? Because Yah cannot be tempted, but Yahushua clearly was.